For my project, I chose to do the soybean, or as it is known by its scientific name, Glycine Max. The soybean is a species of legume belonging to the family Fabiaceae. It grows above the ground and on average, it reaches about 3 feet in height. The stem and pods are covered in thin hairs. Pods are most commonly brown, and the edible seeds they contain can range from yellow to black. However, the colors of soybean plant parts do differ across different species. Mature soybean flowers are most commonly purple and white. The biggest difference between the wild soybean Glycine Soha and the cultivated soybean Glycine Max is seed size. The seeds of cultivated soybeans are about 9.4 times larger. Over time, people have selected for bigger seeds and pods because that is the part of the plant that is used the most. Soybean plants grow best in the summertime in fields with a diverse range of soil types. Today, advanced farming methods are used to grow soybeans, in which machines take the place of humans in the processes of sowing and harvesting. Soybeans are often grown with another crop, such as sunflower, maize, or cotton, because of its valuable role in nitrogen fixation of the soil. China is the origin of soybean cultivation, the first domestication dating back to the 11th century BCE. It is the region with the most diversity and distribution of the plant, and seeds have been found in ancient tombs and artifacts. Another piece of supporting evidence for China as the origin is a widespread distribution of Glycine Soha, the earliest ancestor of the cultivated soybean. Studies of the genes of soybeans in areas such as Indonesia, Japan, North India, and Thailand suggest that the soybean entered these regions in the time frame of the 1st century AD to the 15th century AD. This exchange most likely occurred through the Silk Road trade routes. From the 16th to the 18th century, European sailors, missionaries, and explorers came into contact with soybeans and soy foods during their travels. And in 1765, the first soybeans were planted in the colony of Georgia. This is a map of the major distribution of soybean cultivation around the world. Today, soy foods can be found all over supermarkets in numerous forms such as cheese, milk, yogurt, soy nuts, soy ice cream, and edamame, etc. In Western culture, the soybean crop did not gain significance until recent decades. In contrast, soy has been consumed in Asian countries for over a thousand years. From the time the Chinese domesticated the soybean, they have invented numerous ways to prepare and eat them. These ideas diffused into other parts of Asia where even new ways were created. Traditional soy foods include both fermented and non-fermented soy foods. Fermented soy foods are valued for their unique strong flavors, which differ depending on the types of molds used in the fermentation process. Some examples of traditional fermented soy foods are soy sauce, miso, natto, and tempeh. The Chinese invented soy sauce thousands of years ago, and it is a liquid that is removed from the molded paste, and it is used as a flavorful sauce. Japanese miso is made from the fermentation of soybeans with rice and barley, and it is used as a spread into season different dishes. Natto is another Japanese invention, and it is named after the bacteria of the rice straw added to the soybeans, Bacillus natto. Tempeh is a traditional soy food from Indonesia. In order to make tempeh, the outer coats of seeds must be removed, and the seeds are then cooked and fermented. Fried tempeh is often used as a meat substitute. Examples of traditional non-fermented soy foods are soy milk, tofu, yuba, and okara. The traditional home method of making soy milk involves the techniques of soaking, washing, and then mashing the soybeans into a liquid paste that is then filtered through a cloth. Water is added and the soy milk is ready. Once you have soy milk, it can be converted into a variety of other soy products. If you add a thickener, it will become tofu. Soy milk is heated until a solid layer forms at the top that is removed and dried resulting in a chewy, flavorful delicacy called yuba. Okara is made from the solid leftover when soy milk is filtered. The ways that these so soy foods can be eaten range from a substitute for meat to a condiment in a variety of soups and dishes. Soybeans are composed of mainly isoflavones, phytoesterols, saponins, and lignans. Other comp components include phytic acid, lectins, and trypsin inhibitors. Isoflavones are the compounds in soybeans that are most associated with protection against chronic diseases. They are found in soy proteins and are estrogen-like compounds. Genistine and daidzine are the main soy isoflavones. Uncooked soybeans are harmful to humans, but heating them reduces the activity of phytic acid, lectins, and trypsin inhibitors, which all have detrimental effects on the body. 
Phytic acids hinder the body's ability to absorb nutrients. Lectins are proteins that animals and humans are not able to digest. The trypsin enzyme is important for its role in the digestive system of breaking down proteins for absorption. Uncooked soybeans contain trypsin inhibitors, which reduce the activity of the trypsin enzyme. Nonetheless, cooked soybeans have many nutritional benefits. They are considered a complete source of protein that can be eaten in the place of animal meats. They are also good sources of fiber, vitamins, and minerals. As mentioned before, isoflavones are the compounds in soybeans most associated with protection against chronic diseases. In vitro studies reveal that isoflavones may be promising for cancer prevention. Genesine and datesine actively hinder enzymes that are important to the growth of tumors. Particular interest is given to the likely prevention of breast cancer because genesine competes with estrogen to bind to its receptors and lowers the effects of the hormone. Soy proteins and isoflavones are widely believed to lower the risk of cardiovascular disease by lowering blood cholesterol and increasing arter arterial elasticity. Genesine plays an important role in the prevention of osteoporosis, as it is thought to not only prevent bone loss, but to potentially restore new bone cells. In vitro studies also demonstrate the antioxidant powers of genesine and datesine. These isoflavones inhibited the oxidation of DNA in human immune cells and also protected free against free radical induced, induced lipid peroxidation. Soybean production has grown tremendously, increasing to twice the overall global economy since 93, and accounting for the use of about 6% of the global farmable land. The traditional methods of preparing so soy foods remain, but these traditional soy foods are also now produced in large soybean processing factories. The U.S. is the country with the highest soybean processing capacity, followed by China, Argentina, and Brazil. Although soybean agriculture has had positive impacts for the economies of many countries, it has also had some devastating social and environmental effects. Expansion into South America is threatening the livelihood of local farmers, indigenous communities, and even larger ranchers. Furthermore, soybean monoculture is threatening the fertility of soil in these countries, as well as the preservation of the rainforests. In conclusion, there is a lot of interest in the health benefits of soy as a supplement and the effects of increasing soy in the diet on general health. When soy is used as a substitute for animal protein, it is likely to improve cardiovascular health. However, the studies of the effects of soy supplements in the diet have not shown the same health benefits. The role of soy products in the treatment and prevention of many cancers is still being investigated. In the future, the replacement of animal protein with soy protein may play a role in decreasing the incidence of obesity and other health-related risks because it has less fat and has the added benefits of fiber, vitamins, and minerals.